response video to basically something that Gully TV talked about pertaining to Marshall Bruce Matters, stage name Eminem. And he basically said everything that I've been saying about Eminem for years. You know, everything that I've been saying about Eminem pertaining to being the GOAT and, you know, skill-wise, you know, as far as it, it, everything goes. And he said pretty much everything that I've been telling you about this dude. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was cool to see myself justified, solidified, and certified what I've been saying about Marshall Matters, about him not being, being the GOAT, and about him not being all that. Now, once again, I did say the dude is a good rapper. But it's been this thing how everything Eminem has done has been sensationalized like he was the first one to do it. One of the things that really bothered me about the whole Eminem thing is that you got, you know, and the thing is the younger generation try to make it look like Eminem paved the way for white rappers, which that couldn't be the furthest from the truth. You know, as time goes by, you know, you get a lot of, you know, new generation people, millennials and stuff. They don't really do their research. Eminem wasn't even remotely close to being, you know, the first white rapper that kicked down the door and made it possible for white rappers. That title belongs to the Beastie Boys. And at the end of the day, um, when License to Ill came out, here's the thing that a lot of people get misconstrued. Um, we knew from the gate that the Beastie Boys were white. It wasn't a secret. Now, I know they're not on the album cover, but when you buy the album cover, it clearly had a picture of three white guys. So it was obvious that they were white. But at the end of the day, they managed to put out one of the greatest, I'm talking about top 10 albums in hip hop history. And to be honest with you, nobody cared that they were white because their music was so good on that first album. Had LL had the beats that the Beastie Boys had on License to Ill, LL Cool J would have sold probably 15 million records. But the Beastie Boys went on to sell a huge amount of records, which, which is fine. It's just like when Eminem do something, they try to like enhance it. They try to make it look like they've never seen something like that before in their life. Just like when he came out with the Godzilla rap. Well, that had already been done many moons ago by Tongue Twister. Tongue Twister is in the Guinness Book of Records for the fastest like wordplay. So it already had been done. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, I was amazed. I wasn't. But they've always been this thing about Eminem to where people act like you can't criticize Eminem. And the sad part about it is you get black people that try to do it damn near just as much as white people. Where if you have anything to say about Eminem, if you critique him or criticize him or say anything that his his fans don't like, then all of us say, oh, you're a hater, you're a racist. Like, man, get out of here, man. Get out of here. And once again, there were plenty of white rappers before uh, Eminem came out. House of Pain, Everlast. You know, Terry B, you know, a lot of people. I mean, just stop at third base, MC Search. You know what I'm saying, for real, Pete Nice. So there are plenty of like non-black rappers that came out or white rappers that came out long before Eminem did. It's third base, third base had good music. Nobody cared about third base being white. The people that, that love to bring the race card in when it comes to Eminem or the so-called mythical race car is white people themselves. They use that as a defense mechanism or a shield if you try to say anything bad about Eminem's music. And I'm just telling the truth. Eminem ain't made good music in a while, in almost 20 years. He hasn't made a good album in a while. And that's just fact. You can't be you can't be an all-around goat. And people love to use record sales. And that's kind of, and that's a cop-out too. Record sales are good. That means you got a, a, a solid fan base. But just because you buy an album, does it mean that it's actually good? 
Michael Jackson's Thriller is one of the highest selling albums in in history. I mean, at the time, it sold an astronomical amount of records for a while. But was that Michael Michael Jackson's greatest album to me? Was that Michael Jackson's best album? Absolutely not. Off the Wall was a far better album than Thriller. Facts. Facts according to me. Because something does very well doesn't mean it's the greatest. And that's the problem that people people have. Now it does, you know, you can use record sales sometimes for bragging purposes, but then that still doesn't mean that that necessary makes this person a GOAT because I don't think Michael Jackson is the greatest singer that ever lived. He sold a whole bunch of records, but no, that doesn't make him, and he did different things that will probably won't ever be done ever again. Yeah, factual. But is he all uh, all around greatest singer? Like I'm talking about as far as vocals go, probably not. He could sing though. I'll be honest with you. I think thought that Howard Hewitt was a better singer than Michael M Michael Jackson. So was Luther. So was Marvin Gaye. It was a few people. I'm just I I'm just keeping it. I'm just keeping it a buck. You, Fred, you, Freddie Jackson. They were far better uh, vocalists than, than Michael Jackson. Ronald Isley. Okay? But that doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying, that Michael Jackson was a better singer than him. Yeah, he, you know, he got better promotion. He sold more records. Just because you sell more doesn't necessarily make you the best. That's fact. We all know that last Avengers movie ain't the great greatest movie ever made yeah it did very well at the box office that doesn't mean that it's the greatest movie ever made okay let's let's just keep it a buck but yeah i've been saying this for years about eminem like i said that's his fan his fan base go-to move record sales or if you don't like them you're racist you're a hater not true that couldn't be the furthest from the truth i'm just keeping it above could be the furthest from the truth but gully tv he just basically said everything that i've been saying about the dude as far as like where you rank him as an all-time great and you know his resume everything uh a potential versus battle I mean, you got to go to Gully TV and see the whole the whole stream. It's, it's, it's well over an hour. But I said this before about Eminem, that Eminem, like I said, if he does a versus battle, like I said, he's going to be totally exposed. Like I said, you got to be a diehard fan to name 20 Eminem songs that he could probably use in a versus battle. Now, Eminem... When he made albums, he had good filler songs. He had songs that he didn't release for singles that sounded pretty good, but stuff he released the singles, they wasn't that hot. And that's just that's just the honest to God truth. Whether people whether people want to hear it or not, that's just the honest that's just the honest to God truth of all Eminem. He hasn't made good music in a while. And then if you look at his lyrical content. He had some songs where he did drop some hot bar, but then he had some songs where he said virtually nothing, or he just said some stuff that you was like, like, is this dude like serious? I just heard, I don't know how recent this was, but he had a freestyle he dropped, and I listened to that for like 30 seconds. I was like, oh man, I gotta turn this off. And I think one of the myths about Eminem were why I think he is where he is today is because he had the backing of Dr. Dre. And, okay, Dr. Dre helped get him where he is. That's factual. But to say that, well, that's that alone is the stamp of approval. And then another thing people try to do is they love to play that 
that this this is one of their other uh, favorite go-to moves. Oh well, he did a he did a song with this dude, and he performed with this dude, and so and so said to Eminem, "Okay, that's them." What LL Cool J says or what other people say doesn't reflect on my opinion. That's their opinion. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're right. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong. They're just giving their opinion. Of course you're going to agree with LL Cool J say. Of course you're going to agree with, with um, somebody like um, Tretch may say or Royce the 5'9". I guess Royce the 5'9 going to tell, going to call himself trying to check me too because you know Royce can't seem to ever let Eminem speak for himself it's like you know Royce the 5'9 have to always play Eminem's pit bull like I said Eminem can speak for himself and Royce don't have the right to sit up here once again and tell people that we have to worship the ground Eminem walk on and let's get let's okay and let's get rid of this other myth about Eminem putting Detroit rappers on I was messing with Detroit rap back in 1993 when the boss came out Detroit was already established and then when you think of Detroit rap you do not Eminem do not come to mind and really neither does Royce the five nine or slum village even though slum village has some heat big Sean I mean, when you listen to Detroit rap, you think of dudes like, you know, dudes like Giovanni, you know, T Grizzly, all them kind of dudes, Peasy, you know, Blade, you know, Blade Icewood, you know, all those kind of dudes. So I'm just keeping it, I'm just keeping it a buck. When I think of Detroit rap, that's who I think of. Those those type of dudes. And then Royce, he go around here calling this self trying to argue and say the Detroit rappers have to pay homage. No, they don't. It's the same out here. Okay, Too Short got Oakland established as far as Oakland rap go. But you can make an argument, okay, Too Short really ain't from Oakland. Too Short adopted Oakland. Too Short is really from L.A., but he adopted the Oakland, you know, pimps and hoes culture. The whole, you know, that that culture. Because Too Short came to Oakland when he was like 14. Too Short really from L.A. But that's okay. He put Oakland on the map. Appreciate it. But people really took notice of hip-hop, whether you like it or not, when MC Hammer blew up, whether it was good or bad. But then again, Oakland has never got its just due when it came to came to hip hop. Cause a lot of these artists that, that came up were inspired by Too Short and guys like that listening to you, you know, some of that hardcore Oakland gangster rap. You know, from Rappin' Ron to Aunt Dilly Dog, the Loonies, all them type of dudes. Seidel, Father Dumb. You know, so I'm just I'm just saying it's always been this thing with Eminem to where people act like you can't critique his music. And like I said before, and I'm going to continue to say this, Eminem hasn't put out good music in almost 20 years. He said out of his own damn mouth, he said that he focuses more on lyrics and that's that could be debatable. Now I'm not gonna lie, he dropped a good he dropped a good verse on that Dr. Dre song. The gospel. He dropped a good verse. I had to I had to give it to him. He dropped a good verse. But then here's the thing. Eminem got out rapped on that. See, here's another thing. Everybody loved to throw up renegades. Everybody loved to throw up renegades and, and you know Gully TV, he kinda kinda he kinda argued against whether Eminem stream where I just listen really break down the lyrics did Eminem really out rap Jay-Z on Renegades I know Royce the 5-9 I think was originally on that song and they took him off and what happened was Jay-Z got a hold of the song and then he put his own verse on there something like that pertaining to that now everybody loves to talk about Renegades how Eminem supposedly had destroyed Jay-Z. How come nobody brings up Bitch Please Part 2 where where 
man nobody brings that up nobody brings it up how sticky fingers murdered sticky fingers murdered eminem on bitch please too And that was on the uh, Marshall Matters album, album number two. Nobody brings that up. Sticky Fingers murdered Eminem on that. I'm talking about Sticky Fingers murdered him. I'm talking about it was a rap. Sticky Fingers had the hottest verse, hottest flow. I mean, Sticky Fingers like destroyed that track. I'm talking about it. I'm talking about, you know how you lead a mic smoking 50 cent. I mean, excuse me. Sticky Fingers killed that shit. So nobody talks about nobody brings that up. You notice the uh you you know what I'm saying the white boy Eminem uh stands don't never bring that song up. Cause I'm gonna be honest, every now oh, well, Nas said, okay, well, you know, Nas was was going at it with Jay-Z. It was, you know, it was a hot line, but that's debatable. But if we gonna talk about somebody who got murdered on their own stuff, then Eminem got murdered on bitch please too. Sticky fingers destroyed that boy. He destroyed that boy. I noticed nobody don't bring. I noticed nobody don't bring that up. Eminem that got out rapped on songs before plenty of times. So can we please? So can we please stop that? Quit playing with me. No, I'm not saying e e e Ether wasn't a... No, Ether was a better song. No, Ether is a classic disc, disc record. I'm just saying, I'm just talking about the whole... You know what I'm saying? The whole... That M Eminem murdered you on your own, you know what? But like, I, the point that I'm trying to make is how come nobody don't bring up how Stinky Fingers destroyed Eminem on his own album? Go listen to uh, Bitch Please Part 2. That's all I'm saying. So I'm glad Gully TV like exposed Eminem. Like I keep saying, he's a good rapper, but that goat stuff, I don't know about all that. I don't even have Eminem. I don't have Eminem even in my top 20. And like I said before, you can't be, you can't be a goat if you don't get played in the clubs. You really don't get played. You don't get played in the streets and you don't and, and chicks don't bump your music that all plays into like where you should be ranked as an all time great. See, that's the difference between guys like Eminem and Snoop. Say what you want to say about Snoop, but Snoop's music get played at the clubs. His, his stuff get played in the streets and it get played on the radio. Eminem don't get no radio radio play. I'm just I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that all has to come into account when you evaluating these these type type of rappers. Like I said, never said the dude couldn't rap. Never said the dude couldn't rap. But anyway, I'm at the job now. You know, at the job now, I'm out.